Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this little series I'm putting together, we're taking a look at these different auto landers and we're comparing uh, the different auto landers against each other, but we're also comparing the auto landers against themselves with the different methods that they have to, to do an automatic landing at Brighton Beach. So in the previous videos, we used a baseland autopilot and we used Pursuit MFD and let's go ahead and actually switch camera view so we can actually see our information. So we used Baseland Autopilot in the Hover Configuration, the Retro Configuration, the Pro Configuration, and then we used Pursuit MFD in the Close, Above, and Far Configurations. And the results that we came up with were what you see here, which is that the very best result that we saw was using the BLA Autopilot facing Prograde towards the base using the Retro Engines. And again, this was based on having a starting altitude of uh, 36.49 kilometers. And what this altitude means is when we start the scenario, if we do nothing, that will be the, that will be our altitude when we reach Brighton Beach. So we can see, you know, there are some differences, and I would say that the BLA uh, Pro is the uh, is the clear victor here. It's definitely way better than Pursuit MFD's approaches, and it's even better than the other approaches that it can use in the hover configuration or the main engine. But that is based on having an altitude over Brighton Beach of, you know, th about 36 and a half kilometers. What would happen if before we, uh, before we did our, before we set up our autopilots, if we brought down our altitude? Well, that was what I wanted to know, so I've done several tests for that off camera. So let me go ahead and take a look at those. And here's what we have. So I've done these five tests and I'm saving this one for last and you'll see why. So what I did was I used the exact same scenario, but I made sure I was at the halfway point and I did a small uh, six meter per second burn to bring the altitude down over Brighton Beach at 11.18. And I verified that that would be the altitude over Brighton Beach by not doing any kind of a landing and just warping time forward and using the VOR VTOL MFD to let me know when I was at my closest approach to Brighton Beach. And when I was at my closest approach, I went down to 0.1 time and I watched my altitude and this is what I came up with. So, and I used that, I used that exact same scenario and all these, uh, and all these configurations. So the starting DV for these configurations was 8,662. Again, I only used six meters per second uh, worth of delta V compared to these scenarios. And my ending DV after performing the retro uh, test was uh, 6726. So let's actually compare that to, uh, let, me take the, let me take out a couple of extra lines here so we can see these better. And one of the first things we can do is kind of a, a side by side. So like retro engine test versus retro engine test. The total DV used on this one was 2078. The total DV used on this one was 1936. So bringing down the altitude did indeed help for the retro test. What about the pro test? Well, in this one, the total DV used was 1896. And in this one, it was 1869. So again, it did help, just not by a lot. What about the close uh, test for Pursuit MFD? Well, here it was 2260, here it was 2243, so it did make a difference, but not a lot. And the same with the above. So here we had 2290, here we ended with 2273, so about a 17 meter per second improvement. Again, that's not zero, but it's not huge either. And finally, we have the Pursuit MFD in the FAR test. We, here we had 2238. Here we had 2221, so again, about a 17 meter per second savings. Uh, so not, not a big difference there. A little bit more, I think it was a bit more of a difference in um, like the main test versus the main test. So there you can see, you know, that was, that's like over a hundred, so that's pretty significant. But compared to the, compared to the, the retro versus retro, it didn't make a huge difference there, about 30 meters per second. But based on what I'm seeing so far, the very best result we can get is right here. It's uh, using the baseland autopilot in the prograde, so you're facing the base using the retro engines and bringing your altitude down 
uh, before you get to Brighton Beach. And the reason I picked 11 kilometers is because according to NASA, the highest peak on the moon is just under 11 kilometers. It's like 10,700 and some change meters above the ground. And if I'm not mistaken, that highest peak is near the equator. So that means um, in a normal, in a normal uh, orbit around the moon, there's a pretty good chance that you could possibly run into that highest peak. So as long as you're above that highest peak, then you should have no problem at all. So, so um, I think I will make it a habit to try to set my, um, my altitude above Brighton Beach at around 11 kilometers. Okay, so we still have one more test to perform, and that is going to be using the Baseland Autopilot in the hover configuration. I've saved this one for, for the very last, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at that in this video. So let's go ahead and switch camera views here and jump right into it. Okay, so uh, let me unpause. And here's our configuration. You know, I brought my PEA down to 11 kilometers, but again, by the time we actually get to Brighton Beach, it's actually going to be 11.18. Uh, and I used six meters per second worth of Delta V to, to perform that, uh, to perform that deorbit burn. And this is the exact same scenario that I used in all five tests, all five previous tests. So let's go ahead and bring up Baseland Autopilot. And we're going to go to the right because we want a Baseland and we're gonna go down. And this is the program we're going to use, but we can switch programs by going left and right, but we want the hover program. So let's go down again, Brighton Beach is already selected. And let's go down one more time and then go over to the right to select Landing Pad 2, just like we've done in all of our other tests. And we're gonna hit OK. And we're going to give the Autopilot control of yaw, pitch, roll and engine and then we're going to engage the autopilot now it's not going to do anything until engine is about 50 percent and that's not going to happen until we're below a thousand kilometers so we can go ahead and warp time forward at a thousand to speed that up come out of time warp here come out of time warp again well we can go a little bit more around here i feel like i need to come back and about 45 46 about right there i'm gonna go to real time and at 50%, it's going to orient the vessel. So we're gonna let it take care of that. Okay, so now that that's taken care of, I'm gonna press Control F2 to bring up our time warp. And we're going to, um, I'm gonna warp time forward just a little bit until the engine starts. And I think it's around, okay, so I'm gonna go back to real time because I want to try to let the engine start when we're under real time because I feel like I've kind of noticed if the engine engages under time warp, it seems like the vessel uh, jostles a little bit. And one thing I noted in when we did the BLA hover test at the 33 kilometer mark was that that transition from let me actually that transition from this orientation to this orientation is not very smooth at all on this side let's bring up our camera and there's Brighton Beach and let's do a bit of time warp like we've done in the other videos looks like it was getting a little looks like it's a little loose there at five uh, six and seven so let me go to five let me go to four that seems pretty stable so we'll stay there uh, fortunately, this autopilot's a bit faster, and we're getting pretty close here, so I'm going to make sure I go to real time before it does the transition. So we're almost there, just about a quarter of a kilometer to go, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to real time. And again, we're going to wait for the call out before we turn on the APU and put down the landing gear. So it's just dialing in its final position here before it's going to do that transition. And here comes the transition. And we should be getting that call out. There's the call out. And...
That's why I saved this test for last. I had ran this off camera and found that uh, for this particular test, this autopilot just doesn't work. So let me go ahead and exit out of Orbiter just to get rid of that annoyance. And let's switch back over to this view here. So the BLA hover uh, uh, autopilot seems to need several kilometers to be able to fall so that it can do all that fussing around that we saw it do in the first test. And the fact of the matter is, I don't see any reason to use this autopilot ever, even in this configuration, because it's the worst of these three. So why even use it? It seems like uh, this one and definitely this one are just so much better than that autopilot. Why even use it? So I guess for this one, I'm just going to put in zero because we crashed. So basically it used all of our DV because all of it went up in flames. So let's do a side by side comparison here. And the best result again, unsurprisingly was uh, BLA. And so that's E13. So let's say equals E13 minus E11. And then we'll let it fill it in. Okay, so this test, obviously, we can throw it out because it, it was a failure. So compared to the best result, using the main engines when we lower our altitude, is uh, an um, it costs us 67 more meters per second. But let's compare that to up here. So when we started at an altitude of 36.5 kilometers, it used an extra 182 meters per second. So by doing that little 6 meter per second burn to bring down the other side of our orbit, we saved ourselves over a hundred delta V from you know from this test to this test and then again this test is the best in both cases and in this case um, it's better overall by what is that like 27 meters per second so by using by doing a six meter per second burn to bring down our altitude we saved uh, you know we, we I guess we have like a net savings of 21 meters per second if I'm doing that mental math correct and compared to um, so compared to 36.5 kilometers and about or let's call it 11.2 uh, this one actually performed worse than how this one did uh, compared to the best result anyway and same with this one and same with this one so it looks like but how, let's see how the, how did these compare to each other. So this used 2260, this used 2243, so it was a little bit better. So I, I think the takeaway here is that, um, you know, number one, this autopilot is just clearly the winner. It, using it in this configuration, it's just, you know, hands down the best. And if we are trying to be even extra efficient, we can bring down our altitude by doing, you know, again, like just a fiver, uh, you know, somewhere probably between like five and 10 meters per second of a burn to bring down our apoapsis. It's not a huge savings overall, like when we compare these numbers um, compared to what we had up here. So like 1869 versus 1896. But again, it's not zero either. And if you're trying to be hyper efficient, then this is the way to go. And if we knew for sure that we weren't going to hit the highest peak, like if we could have like a, a heat map effectively of the of the altitude of the mountains on the, that are on our orbital plane around the moon then we could potentially bring down our altitude at brighton beach you know much lower like if we know for sure it on my orbital plane between here and brighton beach there's nothing higher than say two kilometers then we could bring our our altitude all the way down to like 2.25 or 2.5 something like that and then all these numbers would be even better by a little bit more. So that's going to wrap it up for this series. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at all of this different information. I know I did. Um, I've definitely had some, some insights here. I'm like, aha. I mean, it's all things that I think we kind of know intuitively. But it's always one of those things that, you know, you don't really have the hard data to back it up. It's just like, yeah, this, 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 this has to be better because, well, now we know. Um, like empirically that, uh, you know, that this approach is the best. So like the video, leave me some comments down below. Let me know what you think of these numbers. Is there something else that you would have done differently than I did here? Is there something else you would have tested? 
Is there a different approach that you would have taken to the analysis? Let me know, and I will see you in the next video, if there is one.